I've got a nice little report on screen here, which is run by slicers. So how can I get the selections from these slicers to feed text on my spreadsheet? I'll show you how in this video. As with virtually all of my videos, you can download this spreadsheet with the link in the description or on the top comment, instantly down to your computer, no details asked for or required. You can then work along to what I'm doing, which will make you learn better, or you can just use it as your own template to create your own great looking reports. When I looked into this problem, I found a lot of information online about coding and quite significant sort of VBA programs that have tried to achieve this. But actually, there's a really straightforward way of achieving it. It takes advantage of a feature of slicers because slicers can be connected to multiple pivot tables at the same time. So this slicer, as well as controlling my report, for example, could be controlling another pivot table on another sheet or just off, off screen. And that allows us basically to drive out results from these slicers into a pivot table and then pick up the data in the pivot table and use it for the report titles. So let's show you exactly how you might go about doing that. So all of this report is running from this table of data here. And it is an Excel table, as you can probably tell. I've got the table design menu up. And if your data isn't a table, I'd strongly urge you to turn it into one. You can just push Control T on your data or hit on the insert menu and hit table. Because it's just going to mean that all of this, you just link it to the table. You don't need to worry about setting data ranges. And if the table gets bigger, it's all still going to work. So it's an additional bit of an aside. So it's all working from this table here. And if I click on the table and summarize with a pivot table, and I'm gonna put this onto an existing worksheet, and I'm gonna put it onto somewhere over the side of the report. So let's just put it kind of here for the moment. I'm gonna put it there, right? And hit okay. And that's going to allow me basically to build a little list here from the pivot table and then use that as data, collect that data and use it as a title. Now I would actually, in, in real life, so to speak, I would put this on a different sheet because if you put pivot tables on the same sheet as a report, typically you're going to end up with issues with like columns expanding and contracting and, and different row heights and things that could mess up your report. So it's not great practice. I'm just doing it because I want to show you on the same screen how to go about doing this. So here's the pivot table. There's nothing in it. So I'm going to want one of these slices, and this is key, just one. So I'm going to pick product category. I'm going to put it as a row. And you'll see that we just simply get a, a row of a list here of all the product categories that we want. Um, so the next thing is how do we get it so that when we pick this slicer options, this changes. So first things, on the slicer, so if I highlight the slicer and get the slicer menu, you'll see we have this report connections button. And it says it's connected to pivot table three, which is just this one already in the report. And now we have this pivot table four. So I could it's a poor name, but we'll tick that and hit OK. And now you see it's reflecting whatever's in the slicer. And even if I have multiple select button on, you'll see I get more than one item. So this is the basis of our technique here, because now we have this data in cells and we're going to be able to pick it up much more easily. Now, how do exactly do I do that? Well, first off on this pivot table, I need to get rid of the grand total. So if we go to, sorry, the pivot table design <laughs> and switch grand totals off. So there we have just our choices now. And as we do this, 
we're going to get them appearing. And now, now that we've got that, we can use the text join function. Now, this is uh, relatively new in Excel, so if you don't have it, I'll show you in a minute how you can get around it. I'm going to say text join, and it asks for a, a delimiter. <laughs> so I'm just going to put a comma with a space after it for now. We'll see why in a minute. Ignore empty, definitely true. We don't want to include sort of empty rows in this data. And then our text, we're just going to highlight down from the pivot table heading. Now, we might end up with more of these options. So I'm just going to put, say, 10 rows on for the moment and fix that range with F4. So now we've got a list here, furniture, office supplies and technology. And of course, we're going to want to form a title using that information. So I'm just going to actually put on the headings so we can see our sort of referencing a bit more easily. And then I want to just repeat that essentially for a new for the customer segment. So right next to it, I'm just going to put copy and paste the whole thing. And we're going to get a new pivot table here. But in this pivot table, we're going to put take out product category and put customer segment. And now when we go to our customer segment um, slicer, go to slicer, report connections, and this time I'll connect it to this pivot table as well and hit OK. And there we have our new list. And then this formula shouldn't really have fixed the column, but I can just drag that to there. And now we have two boxes of text with our slicer selections. And it doesn't matter how many slicer options I pick or whatever I do, all of it is going to appear in those two cells. If you don't have the text join function, don't worry, just keep watching because I'll show you how you can get around it a bit later in this video. But for now, I'm going to proceed assuming that you do have your data here. Now we've captured our slicer selections, how are we going to form them into a title? So if we just pick somewhere else on the screen for the moment, so up here, I'm just going to start typing something inside in quotes, picking up those cells within so we can form some kind of title. So we might want to say sales or um, product category, gory, um, that, right, and customer segment, no, let's try that. Sales for product category, furniture and customer segment, consumer. And this is moving as we click different things. And that all looks fine, right? You might think, great. <laughs> but the problem is, what if we use multiple selections? You know, apart from anything, it's going to get very long. And if we pick them all, we've got a really long title there. So we have a couple of things wrong here too. So first off, it says product category, or it should say categories. And same with segment. And secondly, it's just a really long title that we probably want to do something about. So a couple of quick sort of tips from my experience in here. So first off, we need to know how many um, things have been selected on the slicer. So we can use the same pivot data here. And I'm just going to put a count here. Now we use count A, hit tab instantly to and arrow keys to select these formulas faster. And I can go down here, and if we just do 10 rows, we know in this case we're not going to get more than 10 rows. We could go down the dynamic 
named range route and, and work out exactly how that range needs to look. But let's keep it simple here. So pick that and hit enter on that. That gives us three entries and four entries. And of course, if we switch off that, hit one, this is always going to give us the right number of entries. So that's all working great. So we now know how many entries we've got, but all we really need to know is whether it's more than one or not. But so in here, we know if it's one entry, we're going to say category. And if it's more than one, we need categories. And the only actual difference is the letter Y. So if we close that off there and just put an if statement in here saying if that, I want to fix that, equals one, we want that Y like that. And then if we don't have that, we want an IES with a space at the end. And there we go. So that sorts that one. Categories, let's test it. Category, category, category. So that's all looking good. And then we need to do something similar on the customer segment. So if I copy that, and so the this time we just need kind of either a T or with a blank or a, or a TS. So let's just put it here. Paste that in. And we need, sorry, this is not N2, it's O2. And instead of a Y, we just want a, we want just a space or we want a T and a space. Sorry, we want an S and space. Let's get it right. Hit enter. I know what I've done here. I know what I've done. That. Okay. Is it working? Let's clear that. So we've got categories and segments. Segment, segment, segments. So our, we are now grammatically accurate. Right, one last touch though. I think we need to start a new line here. So if we do char, which allows us access to character codes, and 10, memorize that one, just commit that one to memory. Char 10 means put a carriage return into your text. So if I do that, and, it, and it's disappeared essentially, because what we need to do is we need to put it in a bigger cell and I'm going to break all my own rules and just merge this for the moment and wrap it so you can see what's going on and left align it. I hate merge cells, but I'm using them so that you can see what's going on here for demonstration purposes only. Right, so we now have a title that's looking reasonable. I would say I can probably make it look a bit better you know but i'm just giving you the general gist here you can probably word it more precisely and this and sim because it's after a carriage return it doesn't need any kind of indent there so i think that will do for the time being so now we've got this inner cell i don't need to i can unmerge it and unwrap it it doesn't really matter and move it wherever I like. So I'm just going to move it out of the way of the report now. And now all I need to do is let's get rid of the pivot chart stuff. On click on the title, hit equals that there. And now we get this ridiculously large title that we're going to need to do something about. But we can left align it and move it around, perhaps over there. So for this title, I think we need to probably do something slightly different because if we try and cram like a massive title like that on the top of a report, it's just hard to read. So if we insert another row under here and link this to put something like showing and then that title and make it much, much smaller 
perhaps sort of change the font to more of a grey or something. Go a bit darker than that, perhaps like that. And we will unfortunately need to merge the cell and wrap it in this case down and perhaps sort of indent it or something like that. And I think that looks totally reasonable as a report. We can hide all of this stuff here, although I would have put it on another sheet. Hide that row as well using shortcut keys, control nine, control zero to do that. And take off these headings. And I think now we're back to having like pretty darn good dynamic report. And all our titles lined up. So that's how you get the data from the slicers onto titles in your report. So here's the bonus information for those of you that don't have the text join function because you need a way of effectively picking up these um, entries from the pivot table outputs from the slicers and we currently use text join. So, so for example we could just pick up the first cell and do and, maybe put a comma and and do this and although it's tedious you're going to get there right I'm going to delete that so you can see what's going on now the problem with that I don't know if you can see here is that it says office supplies and then it's got three commas on the end and unless I pick three entries even then they're going to have a comma on the end so that's not brilliant um, unless you know that you're gonna you know exactly how many entries are and yes you could work from here and put a load of if statements but I think it's messy it's probably going to be better to insert a column next to your pivot table and on this one you just put make it equal to that and on the next one you can put if that is blank, uh, nothing, otherwise put a comma and a space and the entry, okay, and then drag that formula down and that way you'll get a comma in front of all the new lines and when you change the number of lines you just get blanks afterwards so it's fine and then what you can do is instead of linking all of these with commas you can then just link them you can just have a formula that says it's that and that and that and you go down as many rows as you need and then you'll lose the commas because you'll always not end in a comma so that's how you can achieve the exact same result without the text join function. Remember that you can download this file, instant access, just click the link in the description and you can use it as a template for your own work or just go back through some of the formulas that I've created. I hope that's all really helpful to you. It's just gonna give you that cutting edge in your reports that use slicers. Just get those titles looking dynamic too, just that finishing touch that will set you apart from all the other people that are already quite advanced. Good luck. See you soon.